This is where passion meets positivity and optimism. In a world where bad news abounds, You Are Solid Gold with Michelle Lau celebrates the good in our lives and the beauty in the hidden gems around us. Welcome to You Are Solid Gold. Here she is, international television host and QVC jewelry expert, Michelle Lau. Hi, everybody, and welcome to You Are Solid Gold. I'm your host, Michelle Lau. Well, it brings me a great deal of pleasure to bring you one of my very best people in my life, a true solid gold companion, someone I know I can count on my whole life long, Miss Tracy Edwards. Tracy, how you doing? I'm doing great because I'm hanging out with you. Always Thank great you. when I can see you. I wanted to touch base with you about a subject that I know is really near and dear to your heart. Uh, when I met Tracy, Tracy was an off-Broadway actress. She was doing commercials. She was a makeup artist. She just had a lot of life and vitality. And when she walked through those doors at HSN over, what, 20 years ago, and I spotted my friend with the bright blonde hair on the top and the dark hair underneath and the little wedge cut. And I was so indecisive happy. then. <laughs> I thought, I really like this girl. I want to get to know her. We have been such good friends ever since. Can you give us kind of a, an overview of what has happened since HSN? Well, you know, I did, I did a couple um, television shows, local shows, and um, like morning shows, but they were, they were local, like down in Florida, and um, just to, you know, get up and go morning shows, and um, enjoy doing that. That was fun. I toured with a, a, a jewelry company, uh, did some theater those kind of things. And, um, and then I, I had to, uh, had to stop working because of my, um, my illness, which I didn't really talk about years ago. It wasn't something that I discussed. It's something that I've had for, for many years since 1994, 1994, when I was living in New York city, uh, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Okay, so I want to stop right there for just a second, and we're going to rewind to before okay. you were diagnosed here in just a sec. But okay. for everybody out there within the sound of our voice that maybe has heard the term MS but not really understood what it's all about, can you explain a little bit about it? Yes. Um, well, MS is a is a neurological disease. It's it's an autoimmune disorder. Basically, what happens is your immune system is overworking and it decides that it's going to attack your myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is is like the coating that you have on your electrical cord. You know, your electrical cords that you plug in. Well, that, that rubberized coating that's on the outside, basically your nerve endings, all that run the course of your body, it has a coating called the myelin sheath. Your body decides to attack it. And as it attacks it, it eats away, like a little Pac-Man, eats away mm. at the, the myelin sheath. And what that does is it causes um, these, these plaques. So when those plaques develop, they're like lesions, they cause, they cause an interference. So the nerves can't get the impulses through. And when the impulses can't get through, um, it causes the debil deb debilitation. That's that's when you, wow. you know, that's when you have the problems. That's when you you can't move your hand or you can't move your foot or you have a drop foot or you can't see your your vision goes yeah. awry or your swallowing goes awry. That's and we have known each other. I mean, I feel like we kind of grew up together, you and I. And the whole time I worked with Tracy at HSN, um, you know myself having a handicap, Tracy having a handicap. These were things that um, we knew about one another, but mm -hmm. that we weren't able to really share um, outwardly with anybody because it was there was really a stigma around it. So this is part of the reason that I wanted to do this with Tracy today is I want to let you know that there are people around you, all around you that are suffering with things and many handicaps are not seen. So take me back to 1994-ish mm -hmm. when you are a little bit before when you were living in New York City, what started to happen to you that made you realize that something was up, something wasn't right? It probably started happening a couple of years prior to that because I was, when you're, you know, when you're an actor and you're going back and forth, I lived in Manhattan, but 
you know, I'd get a job or a gig and I'd go and I'd do this show for eight weeks here or there throughout the country, regional, you know, regional jobs in theater. And then, then I'd come back and then I'd sling makeup and then I'd go out again. You know, it's, that's kind of the way it is. Well, I was, um, I was doing a show in, in Indianapolis. I think I was doing Singing in the Rain and I fell and boy mm. did I fall on my butt. I was turned during the show. And um, so I started having these just pratfalls, but it wasn't, it wasn't because I was, you know. Do you mean it wasn't a pratfall? You physically no, fell, fell during the show? During butt. the show? Yeah, yeah, I just fell and because I just. So there you were, you were singing and dancing. And I wasn't singing and dancing. I was just walking on stage. Oh my and It wasn't, gosh. you know, I wasn't doing anything, anything other than just making an entrance. And so did the right audio, back. Did the audience think that it was like a part I of made, the stage? I made it part of it because I said, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah, because because if you know singing in the rain, you you know that that character Lena Lamont she she talks like this, and she's you know she's a real stinking. So I said, "Don't just stand there looking at me. Help me up, will you?" And so I did that. And so the guy had to pick me up and help oh me. God. He looked at me like, "What the heck?" You know. And so, so then we just went on with the scene. But those are the kind of things that sort of happened to me. I, yeah. you know, just oh, that's horrible. Things. But then, then it would go away. But those were, the, those were just little, little shoulder taps. So and we lie, to, we lie to ourselves, don't we, Tracy? When stuff like that happens, like we say, you know, and our inner voice tells us, oh, you're just clumsy or, oh, yeah. you know, um, you need to pay better attention or, oh, you have to focus. And sometimes people around us tell us those things too. Well, yeah. But when you get really honest with yourself, you realize that there is something bigger going on. So you had that happen. Any other stories that you'd like to share? I, well, I think that some of the bigger things happened then when I got back to the city, maybe probably a year or two later, you know, my double vision started happening. Now I was doing, Ooh. you know, I'm doing makeup on people and I'm doing- Oh, that had to be that. interesting. So Suddenly you got a double eyebrow. Like, well, how about four eyebrows, you know? Oh my gosh. No, you know, yeah. you know when you're doing makeup, and I'm making light of it, but- I know, I'm, well, we almost have to, don't we? You kind of have to make fun of stuff. Yeah. If you don't, you can't get through. You, you have to, when you have a chronic condition, you can't be all doom and gloom or you can't get through it for me anyway. No, you're right. You're absolutely if right. You sit and you opine all the time about poor me. You're only going to be a victim and oh, poor me. You've got to also make, I'm not saying you're bigger. You're bigger than your handicap. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, you yeah. have to just, it's you just a just part of that. you. You right. can't live in that. Like I'm not, I'm not MS. I'm just, you know, I just happen to have it. It happens to be there. And, and you know, I just basically pushed through it. I wasn't going to let that define me because if I did, I wasn't going to be able to put food on my table. I had right. to, I had to. But when we think, what is, what is the face of MS? What is, you know, Tracy is the face of MS. Tracy is someone who is functioning and living life to the fullest and doing what she can do within her limitations. Right, right. You know, and, and this is the thing. And it redefines who you are yeah. and what you're able to do. And so I totally get that. Right, right. So you started having double vision. Yeah. You started and I, falling. And um, then I had, but then it started, then my friend, um, we were out one night and I was walking. I'd had a bad fall on the subway. I, where I literally did a, like, I went all the way down the subway stairs, like some of those really steep ones. And I went boom, 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 all the way down. Like a toboggan? Yeah, it's a bargain. And luckily there were some, and people in New York are very nice. Just so you know, people are nice in New York. And That's they were in my experience too. Yeah, wow. they helped me up. And um, and then you're like, oh, what the heck was that? <laughs> and it wasn't because I tripped, it was just because I, you know, I lost my footing because I had a drop foot. That's one of the things that I, that manifested for me is I had a drop foot. Um, I remember you telling me a story once where you had some issues with your eye as well, like your eye fell or something like that. And that was like the probably the, the more important. I, I fell in front of a cab and my friends didn't know where I was. It was a night and they, they saw that I, well, I was in front of the cab <laughs> on the ground. And then on the ground, two days later, my friend noticed we were working together at a cosmetic counter and she said, what is going on with your face? my eye was drooping. It was just really hanging down low. 
And wow. I was really having trouble and I had a lot of numbness I noticed that week, just numbness and fatigue. And I was having trouble swallowing and my eye was dro literally drooping. So all so of these things you're talking about, Tracy, I mean, they all would be scary, just one of them or two of them at a time, mm -hmm. but over time, these things happen. So are these common um, things that somebody might be feeling as indicators of yeah. MS? Yeah, these are common? Yeah, no, and it's, a lot of times it's on one side or the other. Uh, and that thing, that's the thing is many times it'll, it'll happen with your vision. Um, and you'll get numbness in your hands and, or in your feet. And, and, and a lot of these things can, can be other illnesses as well. So um, what I always recommend with people is, is don't try to self-diagnose, um, jot the things down. And because when you, because what they call it is an ex, when, you're, when your disease is active, it's um, like you're having an exacerbation. So what you should do is when you feel like it's so, you're having a lot of stuff, you're real fatigued and all these different things are happening, you, you need to jot some of these things down Then go to your general practitioner and say, listen, th these are things that I'm having um, and it's not getting better. Can, can you do some tests? Can you find a neurologist for me? Can we, can we rule some things out? Because sometimes you have to be your own advocate. And you have Your to, own advocate, for sure. You really have to do it. You have to rule these things out yourself. Uh, I mean, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, another armchair physician, but you have to, you have to ask your doctor. So if a lot of what you're saying is resonating with people out there and they're thinking, my gosh, I better get checked, mm -hmm. would you recommend going to a neurologist first or would you go to uh, your general practitioner well, typically, first? Well, typically, because, you know, with insurance plans and the way they are, you usually have to get a referral anyway. Okay. But, it doesn't now what if that what if the worst thing happens you know well it's not the worst thing okay because i mean anything can be dealt with in this world but if you hear that you do have ms i know that in my case when i heard that i had a degenerative retinal disease my whole life like stopped for a minute you just you almost feel immobilized right so what i want to do is i want to give people places to go or tools that they can use uh what would you recommend is there a place or places that they can yeah, go what there, What's it going to look like? The MSAA, yes. which I used to be a board member of, that's the Multiple Sclerosis Association of America. Yeah. They provide um, assistance to people who have MS. Maybe they help with cooling vests or they help as a resource, a guide to, to find places that can help build ramps if you need a ramp or a wheelchair. See, this sounds exciting. This sounds like something tangible that you could yeah. do. And to help yourself that, I mean, that's really good and even and you may not be you, you may not be in a place where you need those kind of things but they can help you uh find places they can also help you find groups um, ah which, see and these but, might but, be more but groups productive. that are going to be helpful okay so that's to, the msaa right the multiple All sclerosis right. association of america i think they're a fabulous group they really are they really help people who are actively in the disease and maybe you might not have it but you might know somebody who does that's now, wonderful another team that i think a lot of people uh right now especially this time of year uh, around the spring time of year they do it usually do it a, a walks a couple times a year usually in the fall and in the spring um is the ms society ah and um you know you'll see a lot of people going on oh, I'm, I'm going on the ms walk or the ms bike you know they, they do the mm -hmm. bikes too um, where they'll, they'll raise money for MS awareness. And they're also looking for cures for MS. Wow. Wow. So there's time. something that your family and friends could participate in as right. well. And something yes. that we can do in, in times of COVID, right? We right. can, we can still so, wear a mask and be outside and do all that. And, those and types of some things. people may not, and it, for the people who don't feel comfortable getting out and walking, well, there are people who really want to get out and walk and they can walk with their masks. And, and for the people who don't want to do that, you can still do things virtually. You know, you can still have groups and raise money that way and still help the cause. So those are still things that you can do. Well, I had never heard of the MSAA. So I'm really looking forward to looking into some of the services they provide. And like you say, it's important you find a supportive group and a group that's productive. And so I like that I can use, I could use that as a, a resource if need be. Well, that's, well, that's who I really felt come for me and, and for my path, that's who I felt really comfortable with. 
I was on injections for, for many years and they did very well. I did very well on them, but eventually um, I was tired of taking the injections just, and you know, I just, it wasn't working for me anymore. And my, my disease had changed. So I decided to talk with my, my neurologist and I said, I, I'm, I'm kind of done with that. I want to, I want to try this, this new drug that I read about because you still have to do some research on your own. It's a good idea. And so I, I decided to take, um, ask her, I asked her about Tecfidera. It's a new drug and it's, it's made by Biogen. So it's Tecnavera. No, it's, and it's, tech, by, it's called Tecfidera. Tecfidera. I'll yes. put it in the notes so everybody can okay. write it down or find it. And it's and just, it's, it's made by pill. Biogen. Biogen is okay. the company that makes it. And you, it's a pill that you take twice a day. That sounds a lot easier on you, huh? No is injections. No injections yeah. that need to be refrigerated. I don't have to do that anymore. I just have to take oh, the pill twice a day. That's, that's been great. Yeah, it's been so and I've really done well on it. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been real freeing. And um, you're I, such you an know. advocate for not only, you know, people that are thriving in the face of MS, but just for women in general, going through changes in their life and overcoming obstacles. And you really are a solid gold, you know, source of information for that. I know you are. So you can find Tracy if you wanted to reach out to her and talk to her more about her journey. I've been encouraging her, trying to encourage her to, you know, speak out more about this because I think it's important that we do that for one another. And she's been I'm so a, great I'm about it. Wow. So this, this, is, this is fun for me. Well, you are doing fantastic and I'm so proud of you and I love you so much. So until okay. next time, my dear friend. Okay, I love you. All right, I love you too. And you are solid gold. Absolutely. Oh, catch ya. Keep Bye-bye. shining. All right, okay. see ya. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on You Are Solid Gold. We hope that you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Would you please subscribe, like, and share this episode? If you know of a person, place, or thing that is a hidden gem that we should feature on Solid Gold with Michelle Lau, please submit it for consideration at hello at youarsolidgold.com. Now, get out there and shine.